Now, God in the Details, part two, we're going to discuss a little bit about science, and we're going to go right to the universe. How are things, how are things held together? Gravity, for instance. We look at gravity, and we see gravity. We see that, what is gravity? How does it work? Where does it come from? Uh, when did God create it? All that. So let, let's talk about gravity. Have you ever been on rides, amusement park rides and all that? I mean, they're fun. But the idea of gravity is always enhanced in these, in these rides. You basically get to a high point and then you go to a low point. Gravity carries you. You become weightless at, at the very, when you're very high and then you pre are released. You're completely weightless. And then you hit the bottom and you get your G force. You gain all your weight. So, yeah, we have a lot of fun with gravity. Uh, we know gravity works. Uh, it keeps things flying around us. Uh, we know that, of course, amusement rides, we have a lot of fun. But I thought I'd show you Isaac Newton here. And you can see what happens. Oh, he got an equation. It was great mind and could uh, understand the world by understanding the creation around him. Uh, he, thought, he saw things not here on Earth. He observed things here on Earth, but he also looked at the, the whole cosmos, the whole universe, and started to assimilate laws in the universe also apply here. That's kind of interesting, because sometimes you're just thinking the Earth, and you say, okay, the laws here, the Earth are going to work. But how about in space? Well, Newton expanded his mind, looked out with a telescope following Gal Galileo, and examined the, the concept of what was gravity. How did it work? And as he was looking at it, he came to the conclusion that objects attract each other in a constant manner. Uh, that, that little story of the, uh, of the apple here falling on his head uh, is true. He actually witnessed this thing and saw this, this apple accelerate. It actually moves through space and accelerates. It gets faster and faster. That's why we enjoy these rides, because you go faster and faster. You get accelerated. And acceleration means that there's going to be a force behind it. So there's like a visible hand pushing you some way downhill. That's gravity. That's gravity that works. It keeps you pushing down, pushed together. And he said he believed that objects... And he was talking about it in space because he observed these very clearly as he observed the solar system. He saw a major object, the sun, and then he saw the little objects moving around it in a, in a definite path. So gravity is a constant in the, in the universe. He concluded that. He said anywhere in the universe, gravity is constant. Gravity is the law in the universe, and, the, and, and we establish it with a constant. 6.67 times 10 to the minus eighth dine centimeter squared gram to cube. Don't worry about that. I used that in physics class. And we were able to determine the weight of almost anybody, any mass, anybody, uh, if they went to the um, uh, Mars, Jupiter, or wherever they wanted to go, we were able to determine their weight by using this equation right in front of you. It works. But really what makes it work is this constant right in here, this big G. You see it? Without that big G, we couldn't solve it. Well, what are you talking about? That G is a constant. It never changes. And because it never changes, everything is moving in exact motion. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? Where did that G come from? So we look and we understand that that had to be from God himself. And Sir Isaac Newton definitely made that conclusion. The Principia is the most important and influential works on physics of all times. He derived, he talked about gravity in the Principia. He also talked about his laws of motion. And these laws are taught in all physics classes and things like that. And they operate in space the same way they do here on Earth. You push an object, it moves, it accelerates. That's what, what we're talking about. Well, force makes objects accelerate. From zero, they accelerate, they move. There's a force behind it. They change path. There's a force behind it. So he examined this, and he, he examined here these, these things on the earth, and he, he called them, the, we call them the classical laws of physics. Um, Newton single-handedly contributed more to the development of science than any other individual in history. I, I, all my physics course was basically that, when I taught physics. It was Isaac Newton at work, 
We see this all, all the time. Okay, so we look at the laws of cre to a creator, designer God as the divine watchmaker. Uh, this most beautiful, this is Isaac Newton speaking, and he wrote this in, uh, in the Principia. The most beautiful system of sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being. That's Sir Isaac Newton talking about the only way I can look at the universe is that there's got to be a law and a law giver because there's design here. The watchmaker is what he's been referred to, Isaac Newton. Like a watch is working and has a design and has a designer. He said the same thing of God. He said God was a designer. By the way, uh, Isaac Newton did a lot of his work in science when he was fairly young. And for the most of his life and his research, he took on the idea of God. And he, he studied theology for a good part of his life. He was very interested in the fact of God, the creator, a designer of the universe. The laws of science always equal creator. Nothing else. Where do we get the laws from? The laws are constant. Where do those constants come from? I gave you a number. That number is constant. Where did that number come from? There are 66 constants like this in the whole universe. And, and there's others to be behold. But we know of 66, just like this one of gravity. And these things are so important because they keep the universe together. We need to keep that in mind. Newton believed that the universe and all things in it are controlled. The supreme God exists necessarily by the same necessity. He exists always in everything. Gravity is a very difficult field to understand. You know, when Newton said things were attracted to each other, here he, he didn't know how it worked. What do you mean? He said one object is attracted to another object. You follow me? But how does it work? He couldn't explain it. So there were other people that came by, like the one in particular was Einstein. And he uh, kind of worked on it and tried to explain to us that gravity is like time and space making warps. And you have this warp in space and you have like a hole. And, and, and gravity kind of makes a hole and, and that's where we exist. And there's all kinds of crazy theories like that out there. But I want to tell you, when we look at the universe, we see God, we see the laws, we see laws are constant. And I like to tell every atheist that where did these laws come from? Because we have made formulas from them. They, how do you make a formula out of chance? How do you make it? There are this a regulatory body here, regulatory bodies moving at such fast rates of speed, which makes us now go to the next point. If we're looking at how gravity works, we have to understand that there are, I mean, there's a universe that has an order in movement. And gravity, by the way, is considered the weakest force, the weakest force. What's the strongest? Well, the atoms that keep us together, the nuclear forces that keep us together. But gravity is considered the weakest force. And yet it keeps the bodies together. And, and, and there's a regular rotation. They seem to be moving on elliptical paths. They move around in, in, in an orbit. And this orbit is constant, just like the, I gave you the constant before, the gravitational, all depending on these const, the constant of gravity. So the constant of gravity keeps these things in order. Now, if we didn't have that, what would happen? We'd be smashing into each other, wouldn't we? So I want to just give you a few statistics here about the idea of motion and gravity. Remember, gravity has motion to it. So the speed at which particles would have supposedly collided. So if you were relative speeds of heavenly bodies, the Earth's rotation, you're going at 1,000 miles per hour. If the Earth would stop, yeah, goodbye, you're flying 1,000 1, miles per hour into space. You don't feel it, but that's what you're doing right now. If, the, if you take a look at the Earth's revolution as it goes around this axis, as it goes around the axis and it follows its orbit, right? A, an orbit, a constant orbit around the sun, we're traveling at 66,000 miles per hour, 30 times faster than a rifle bullet. So that should be important to you. When you look at these speeds, it's telling you that we are in order. There's a universe that's, that's moving in order. There's a, a universe that be, being controlled by laws. And we know that's the, the governance of God, by the way, as we look at the 
idea, governance, the intelligent design, and that God is good. Okay, we look at the solar system, it's moving, the solar system meaning the sun. The, the sun and the planets are moving at 500,000 miles per hour, pretty fast. How about if we took the overall motion of the Milky Way galaxy? It's 1.1 million miles per hour. That's amazing. So you're moving at these, we're moving at these tremendous speeds. You would think that things would collide, wouldn't you? But because of gravity, because God gave us that law of gravity that's constant and consistent, the, we're able to move in an orderly fashion. Now, there are smash-ups, and we have them. We do have them in the universe. But, of course, these are things that we know that come along because of maybe certain collisions, things been knocked off the orbits by, I'm talking about well, satellites and so on, could be spun off the orbits by um, by push and pull of, of let's say, an object that hits it. So we know that there's things happening in the universe. But did you ever think, did you ever thank God that right now we're safe? And you ever thank God that, look, at all these bodies moving, and we've existed, uh, what, 6,000 years plus? So, I mean, that's a Thanksgiving prayer. Thank you, God, because we are, we're safe right now. <laughs> And we're traveling in orbit. We're traveling in time. It's not a it's not a world or cosmos of chaos. I love this verse. The heavens declare the glory of God from David. Uh, he must have been laying on his back. Uh, I just love David. He, he just puts it right together. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display his knowledge. And we can talk all day, all night about astronomy. I just love that subject. There's so many things out there that that show us his glory. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Those objects can be seen everywhere. You go around, you, this is consistent. You're going around the sun at a constant pace, at a constant, as, as I mentioned, the speed, but you're also circulating that constant in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an orbit with the stars all around you. Those stars have been seen centuries back the same way you've seen them. Maybe a little bit different orientation, but it's not that, it hasn't changed much. <laughs> they can see the same galaxy, the same, um, as we look at the horoscope, I don't talk about hors uh, horoscope images because that, but there are images out in space that I believe have been always there, like Virgo, you can see that uh, the, the knee of Hercules out there, this shining star. And they connect these, they connect the stars to make these pictures. And I believe they come back to the gospel. I think that that's what those, those things are. And that's another, another lesson, but there's a, there's a, God would create these things as signs so we can see him and we can know about his, his grace that exists all over the world. So their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. A beautiful picture of how God's grace and majesty. And as we said, the three areas with doctrine is governance. The governance that can, that holds everything together. God is sovereign. The fact that there's design and the fact that he is good. 